What's going on guys? Welcome back to another overemployed video. Today we'll be talking about a very special topic called never outshine the master. So when you're new to a group and your position is unestablished, you should immediately look to determine the group's leader. The leader in this case is usually your manager, your team lead, or even sometimes a co-worker. If you're a strong character, do not dominate or humiliate the leader. And the reason for this would be not to monopolize too much attention. If the group leader is inferior in an obvious capacity, you will have to downplay or otherwise conceal your talents. Now you may be thinking, why would I ever do that? Well, why wouldn't you? How would showcasing your talents in any way benefit you? You want to be very average in overemployment. In fact, you need to be average in overemployment. Whether you outshine the master or not, your salary will remain the same. Even let's say you get a raise, it won't be enough to replace the effort you put into your job and the stress that would come along with it. Befriend the group leader, win their trust and you'll win their approval. It is always wiser to befriend power than to challenge it. For this yields the most profit with the least energy released. The goal is to always make those above you feel comfortably superior. In your desire to please and impress them, do not go too far in displaying your talents or you might accomplish the opposite. Inspiring fear, insecurity, and giving yourself an amazing reward. More work. That was sarcasm, by the way. So if you're doing more than you need to do in this one job, chances are you're doing this in job two, three, or four as well. If you're keeping your head down and staying low, you're probably putting in, let's say, 30 to 40 hours a week in all your jobs versus you putting 80 hours plus a week in all your jobs if you try to show off and do more than you need to. Should the group leader ever feel disrespected or otherwise outdone, they will mo mobilize the troops and instruct them to attack. And they will try to make your life significantly harder. This is just the reality of life. When you are unestablished, this is a scenario you should seek to avoid at all costs. As it is unlikely, you can weather the storm. Inversely, you should win the leader over. You gain massive influence over a group, leapfrogging many of those in line to positions of power by having a greater favor. So let's go forward and take some scenarios, for example. Let's say you're in school and you notice that your professor is wrong. Most people will think to themselves and go like, wow, this is my chance, finally. And shout out, you're wrong. The answer is X. Naturally, as a primal creature, the professor would be offended and in attack mode to gain back their dignity. Not only did you insult the master, you now have a target on your back from them. Instead, you should have talked to them after class and, and said, hey, I think the answer was this instead of this. And have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation without disrespecting them. And they would actually appreciate that more and and be pleased that this person didn't insult me in front of the whole class and correct me, uh, lowering their dignity. Another scenario is the Elon Musk Twitter situation. So Eric thought his tweet was to Twitter CEO, who was his new boss, explaining why there was a problem with the platform speed. He said Elon was mistaken of the cause of the app slow speed in a very petty way in front of millions of people. Why the hell would you call it your boss in front of millions of people? Like, think about that for a second. How is that smart in any sense? You can send him a private email, call him, walk to his office, do anything instead of calling him out in front of millions of people. Like, what did you expect? A promotion or raise? Never outshine the master. Anyways, speaking of masters, check out the masterclass in the pinned comment below.